Welcome to episode 23 of I Thought I Knew How, a podcast about knitting and life and all sorts. I'm your host, Anne Frost, and this episode was recorded on December 20th, 2019. Today, I'd like to tell you about where I'll be in the coming months, ask for some help as I look into planning a retreat, share some angst about the mail, (laughs) review some yarn from Brown Sheep, the company, not the animal, and a bunch more. So let's get started. First, I'd like to thank Cap's Grandma and Kitty's Knit for leaving kind reviews of the podcast over on iTunes, and the seven or so of you who left a starred review. I know that it takes a moment for you to hop over and review the podcast, but it really does help the show get found by other knitters who are looking, so I very much appreciate it. I'd also like to thank my patrons for their support of the show. This month, you all have covered the cost of the music for three episodes, so thank you very much for that. Early on, I was sort of back and forth about whether to keep the music in the show because it was an out-of-pocket expense, but nearly every time I met a listener, they mentioned that they love it, so I love that listeners are now treating other listeners to the song breaks. I mentioned last episode that I was still hammering out the rewards for the various tiers and goals. Those are all settled now, so if you were holding back on supporting the show because you were waiting to see what I came up with, please hop over and take a look. The address is patreon.com slash I thought I knew how. One of the things I have enjoyed so far was the knit night for listeners who give at the $5 or higher level. It was a great evening of chatting, though I must admit I did not get much knitting done. I'd also like to remind you that there is a mailing list growing through the website. If you go to I thought I knew how dot familypodcasts.com and scroll to the bottom of the page, you can sign up using the form there. On December 25th, 2019, I will draw a name from the members of the mailing list to win a set of stitch markers made in the podcast colors. My intention with that mailing list is to send out a newsletter on the off weeks when I don't produce an episode, and I hope to start that in the new year, so we'll see how that goes. So if you want to be in the drawing for the full set of stitch markers, make sure you go over to the website and get signed up before Christmas morning. I wanted to call your attention to my Instagram account. I started a 14-day knit stash d stash over there. And it started on December 17th and it will end on December 30th. There are no prizes for this from me for participating. The prize will be falling back in love with your knitting stash in time for the new year. In the Philippines, there is a lot of influence from Chinese culture, and one of the things that has carried over into Filipino culture is the use of the new year as a time to do a deep cleaning of your home and leave old feelings and emotional weights and physical clutter behind and start the year fresh. So we are working through our stashes together with the same goal. Personally, I have been feeling a little burdened by the size of my stash and the general state of it. So every day I'm posting a new challenge to get things tidied up and organized and be rid of old broken things and enter 2020 with a fresh sense of inspiration. Day one, we gathered everything knitting related into one spot in our home. Day two, we went through our knitting bags and cleaned and repaired them if they needed it, got rid of any trash or anything that didn't belong in them, and made sure that all the supplies were there for the project inside. The tasks will take longer for some people on some days than others, but that's okay. It's not a race or a competition. The posts with the challenges are evergreen. They will stay on my Instagram wall, so maybe with the holidays and traveling, you'll want to start your yarn stash de-stash at the start of 2020, or maybe you'll need to pace it so you do one task every three days. They are there for you when you are ready. You can find them on my Instagram feed where I'm at I thought I knew how. Yesterday was day three, and the task was to go through all of your knitting books and individual patterns. And honestly, going into it, I thought that maybe I would get rid of two books and like half a dozen patterns and that would be it. I have my books on two shelves Uh, sort of across the room from one another. One is the top shelf of a rolling cart that I keep between my desk and my work table, and that's where I started. And none of those books went away, which didn't surprise me because they are my reference books, and I already knew that I had them there because they had unique, important information for the Master Hand Knitter program, and I wanted them there so that they are easy to get to. 
but I was able to pull four of the books off that shelf because they are more knitting history books and level one doesn't deal with any knitting history yet. Before that shelf was full and my program binders had to rest on top, which was always kind of precarious. But with the history books gone, the binders now fit properly on the shelf. And that sort of on again, off again worry about those binders falling to the floor is gone. So a little bit of stress is gone from my life. I took the four history books over to my other bookshelf, which is about three feet long and was full of books and four binders. So there were, yeah, there were like four binders and a few books and a bunch of loose patterns that were shoved in the gap between the tops of the books and the next shelf. So it was really an overfull bookshelf. And that is when I got worried because already there were too many books. I was sure I wasn't going to want to part with them. And I had four more books to fit on the shelf. So rather than dealing with those books first, I pulled the binders out and I realized that only one of the binders was mine. The rest had belonged to my mother and she and I had very different tastes in knitting and we have different philosophies about what types of patterns needed to be stored. So after going through the patterns and taking out ones that were her style, but not mine, uh, patterns that like were dated, uh, things I had no interest in knitting, I had it down to two binders. I set one aside the other was damaged, and so that one just went in the trash. And at that point, I started going through my books. Eleven books came off my shelf. Eleven. <laughs> I was really shocked by that, but I had a book of just baby hats, and I rarely ever knit those. If I do, I just go to Ravelry and find a pattern. I'm never going to knit a wallaby sweater, so the book for that went... 60 Quick Knits is a perfectly fine book with lovely patterns, but the types of patterns in it already exist in the books that I'm keeping, so it was redundant. Knit for Peace, again, beautiful little book of patterns to knit for charity, and almost all of them exist for free online. So the gap that was left after I pulled all those books off held the binders of patterns and the four history books perfectly. So I turned my attention to the last of my loose patterns that hadn't been put in binders. These were ones that came out of project bags or had just been shoved into the shelf as I picked them up at fiber festivals or something. So I sorted them. I loaded them in the third binder and that one actually is too tall for the shelf. So it did get laid on top of the books, but now it is so much neater. Everything I need is visible. I only have books I still plan to knit from or need for the Master Hand Knitter program. And those two bits of my craft room are no longer chaos. About an inch of paper went into the recycling bin. Eight inches of books went into the donate bin. I found a piece of artwork my youngest did about six years ago and tucked inside one of the book covers. I threw away a broken wind chime. What was that even doing on that shelf? And I found a copy of Elizabeth Zimmerman's Knitter's Almanac that I have been looking for for literally a month. So again, the holidays are a busy time of year, but I really encourage you, if you can't do the yarn stash, de-stash now, to go back to the posts in the new year and go through them. After three days, it had already been a blessing. Moving on, I am thinking about hosting a knitting retreat later this year. I've created a questionnaire on Google to gauge interest and help me shape how the retreat would look. If you have the time, I will stick the link to that questionnaire in the show notes. You can find them by visiting I thought I knew how dot family podcast dot com and open the show notes for episode 23. You can also find the link in the I thought I knew how Facebook group if you scroll a bit. Filling in the survey is anonymous and it doesn't commit you to anything. But if you're thinking it sounds like something you'd be interested in, I'd really like you to make the effort to fill in the survey so I know the opinions of the people who think that they could come. We have been dealing with snow and ice here in Connecticut for the last couple of weeks. It has been crazy. One night they predicted one to three inches and we got 12. (laughs) A couple of days ago, I was helping a friend unpack and... She has such a lovely new backyard and we'd gotten about an inch of snow the night before and so everything was just sort of nicely frosted and I kept looking out the window as we were unpacking her kitchen and thinking how beautiful it was. And I turned my back for maybe two minutes and all of a sudden she was like, whoa, did you know it was snowing? 
And sure enough, I turned around and it was coming down like a blizzard. It started out of nowhere and it was coming down so fast that I thought I might end up stuck at her house that night. And then about 30 minutes later, it just stopped. Just just like you snapped your fingers, stopped. It was crazy. But most of our storms so far have been long, multi-day affairs that have produced more than what was predictive. It has been pretty, but I am not a fan of snow anymore. I am from this area. I'm actually from about an hour north of this area, but I spent 18 years living away from here and my appreciation for snow has faded. (laughs) I am very much looking forward to spring already and we have only had snow for about two weeks. It's an excuse to wear a lot of wool and stay inside knitting, right? Speaking of wool, I do have a yarn review for you for Brown Sheep Stratosphere. Let me give you the details first. Stratosphere is a superwash DK. It's available in 26 solid and semi-solid colors. It's suitable for children's clothing, outer layers, and gifts. Basically, things that you are going to want to wash more often or that you don't trust people to wash properly. I am using it to knit the Chatham scarf, which is garter stitch knit on the bias with bold color work blocks. My intention was to knit this for my sister-in-law for Christmas, but I do, I have, it's not going to get done. (laughs) Christmas is days away and the scarf is not even halfway finished. The yarn colors are really vivid. I'm working with Blizzard, Eclipse, and Hot Air Balloon, which are a solid white, black, and red respectively, and Celestial, which is a semi-solid light blue. It is comfortable to work with and can handle being pulled out and worked again without damage to the yarn. This is my first time doing intarsia in garter stitch, so I had to redo about an inch of the knitting when I realized I wasn't getting a clean line between the colors, and the yarn stood up really well to being frogged and re-knit. Because I realized I wasn't going to finish the project in time for the review, I usually want to go through the entire process, including blocking before I review it for you. I went ahead and I knit a two inch square and blocked that little swatch so that I would know what it was like. And after washing and blocking, it didn't really bloom, but it did soften up some. I would still say that I would recommend it for It's not something that you would want to knit a delicate pattern out of, but it is good for like a nice sturdy sweater for a stockinette with intarsia, like a pattern to it or something. um, Again, like if you were to do some stuffed animals that were going to hold up to some constant usage from the kid, I think from the kids, I think all of that would be a great use for this yarn. Again, it's called Stratosphere by Brown Sheep. Oh, as I say, I think it would be really good, a really good Afghan yarn too. You can find the yarn online and from many local yarn shops. And I want to thank Brown Sheep for sending me some to play with in return for my honest review. Let's take a break and listen to a song. This first song is by Doug Hoyer. I think it's the third or fourth of his that I've played for you. (laughs) I just really like music that is a bit quirky. And so Doug Hoyer keeps coming to the top of the list. This one has a nice quick tempo. So if you are doing the yarn stash D stash and you haven't yet, maybe listen to this song as you get going and it'll move you through it. If you're knitting along, it may affect your tension. So be aware. This is With You In My Arms by Doug Hoyer.
people are pretty amazing. There's a reality show in the UK called Island Medics, and it follows some of the medical workers who work at Gilbert Bain Hospital in Larrick, which is the main medical center for Shetland, and is where the MRI will live when they've raised enough funds. For the last two weeks, there have been new episodes airing during the day, and one of them in the second week featured the Shetland MRI scanner appeal and the MRI mackers. Within minutes... Sales on MRIMackers.com spiked, and within an hour or two, all of the pre-made items listed on the site were sold out. One fellow bought 27 Harriet's hats. 27. (laughs) A call went out to all the Mackers, and they brought things they'd finished over to Harriet's house, and her son Billy got them up on the website as fast as possible, and by morning, they had sold out again. (laughs) He got more things posted the next night, sold out again. People were buying the pattern downloads. Some just started making donations. All over the UK, there was an outpouring of support for this project as people heard about it for the first time. Someone even made a 500 pound donation. What lovely, lovely beasties humans can be when we hear there's a problem that needs to be solved. And of course, we have our knit along starting a little over a week from the time this episode goes live. If you're in the U.S. and want to order from Needlepoint Joint, the code HarrietMRI is good until December 31st if you have a Harriet's Hat kit in your cart. That code will give you 10% off anything in your cart. But at this point, they have sold over 80 kits to participants. And so they're having to wait for a restock from Jameson and Smith. So you may not get the yarn in time to cast on on January 1st with us, but it should be to you shortly after that. The kits do not come with the pattern. You need to go to mrimackers.com and download the pattern from there, but the kit will be enough yarn to knit any of the smaller projects. The cowl will require you to add three more balls of color E, two balls of color A, and one more ball each of color B and D. But if you use the code, you'll get 10% off all those extra balls. Jana Nitz of the Pearl Together Video Podcast and I have been making tutorial videos about substituting yarns and picking colors because you may not want to knit it out of the Shetland wool for some reason. So I go over substituting a woolen spun like uh, the Morehouse Merino 2-ply. I also talk about Ashcroft Mackers as a possibility. They're a company in the UK that use um, an all-natural dyeing process on a superwash base. So if you're making the project for someone as a gift, you might want to opt for a superwash. And I get into that in the tutorials. I've also started a tutorial series to help those who are new to Fair Isle and to help all of us swatch. I've designed a little cuff you can knit and learn things along the way, like practicing your tension, catching floats, weaving in ends on Fair Isle, which can be tricky, and more. If you are thinking of doing the cowl, you can also use the cuff to practice your steak. I'll do a video on that too when it gets closer to the end of January. All the videos are getting posted to both the I Thought I Knew How and Pearl Together social media accounts, so they should be easy to find, and hopefully they will help demystify Fair Isle for those of you who want to give it a go but are nervous about it. Remember, though, the worst that can happen is you pull it out and try again, and that's not so bad. The Knit Along will have cast-on prizes, weekly progress prizes, a big old prize for a finisher, and quite a few additional donations that will be given out as prizes too. To enter to win one of the prizes, you need to post pictures to the Mackin for the MRI thread in the Pearl Together Ravelry group. The deadline for the cast-on prize is January 4th, and then you'll want to post your progress weekly for the weekly prize, and the deadline for finishing will be the 31st. There are stitch markers for me. $25 gift certificates from Morehouse Farm, a kit for a hat from Ashcroft Makers, download codes for patterns by Merrily by Design, and we have had a new contribution come in from Sue at Prairie Bag Works for a yarn bowl and a project bag. You can see examples of those at the Etsy shop for Prairie Bag Works. The yarn bowl is actually pretty neat. It's made from what appears to be a cotton cording, so it keeps your yarn contained, but it's still smushy, so you can throw it in a bag and travel with it. I really love the idea. And I am really looking forward to this knit along. I'll be doing the traditional version of the cowl and a set of gloves. Be sure you hop over to the Pearl Together Ravelry group and join up so you can post your project pictures and be entered to win some of these awesome prizes. 
I told you about my plan to give all my adult nieces and nephews a year's supply of drops detergent for Christmas, right? I've been talking this over with other, you know, middling aged people like myself. <laughs> and they all have thought it was a great idea. But as the time comes, I'm getting a little nervous. I'm thinking they'll really like it though, because what like 23 year old wants to worry about paying for their laundry detergent, right? I'm taking a bit of stress off their shoulders. Anyway, I got on the website, I placed four family sized orders, and they all arrived in three days. The family size orders are meant to last four people for three months, so I figured that would give them each a year's supply of detergent. I was expecting the box with all these orders to be massive, but no. Drops doesn't load up their pods with excessive water, so the pods are much smaller than the kind you buy in the grocery store, and it still gets everything clean. Their sensitive skin formula can be used on animal fibers too because it lacks the enzyme that goes after protein. And not only are the pods small and plastic free, but all the packaging is cardboard. No plastic, no paying for water, effective cleaning. I love it. You can help support the podcast by giving them a try. I don't just recommend it blindly. We have been using Drops almost since we moved back to the U.S. And I have heard from quite a few of you who have let me know that you've made the switch and love them too. Visit tinyurl.com slash drops, that's D-R-O-P-P-S, and you'll receive $20 off your first shipment and Drops will make a contribution to the running of the show. I have been waiting and waiting and waiting for the last box from our trip to Shetland to arrive. The mystery was finally solved the other day. We got a legal-sized envelope in the mail that had the address label and the postage label cut from the box and a letter from the USPS saying that the box had arrived in their facility empty. So I moaned and groaned for a bit, and I went to the website and filled out a claim and told them the titles of the missing books that I could remember. Luckily, it was mostly the ones I'd picked up from Shetland Times, so I could go to their website and look up the titles there. Of the books that I could remember being in the box, the total was something like 260 pounds. So I was really grumpy looking at that number. Then I went to the UK Postal Service site and filed a claim there. And that's when I found out that Because we sent it book rate, it was only insured to 20 pounds instead of 200 pounds. And the shipping alone had been 25 pounds. (laughs) And I was feeling very grumpy and put out and annoyed by everything. The letter from the USPS said that they do maintain a warehouse of loose goods and that they really do check to see if the things that you lost are there. So after harumphing and garumphing about it for a while, I realized that there really is nothing I can do about it. I will either get 20 pounds from the British post office or I won't. Someone will check the bookshelves of lost books and find my missing titles and forward them on to me or they won't. And my mood lightened. And some of my studies came back to me from my years majoring in religion half a lifetime ago. Buddha is teaching that the root of suffering is attachment. Marcus Aurelius's injunction to bear in mind that everything that exists is already fraying at the edges and in transition, subject to fragmentation and to rot. The reminder early, early, early in the Hebrew Bible that dust thou art and unto dust shalt thou return. The books are likely gone. The money is likely gone. But in the larger scheme of things, it's not important. And I was letting my attachment to those missing things ruin that day. I have no control over whether those books ever show up on my door. And realizing I lacked that control was making me miserable. But they're books. I was happy without them before I bought them. I can be happy after having bought them, even if I am without them. The winter holidays can be a fraught time for people. We can get caught up in the gifts and who said what to whom. We think if we give the right gift, then X will happen, or receiving a certain gift will mean Y. So-and-so is coming and they always... I have to go to this party and I'd rather... These are all reflections of our desire to control things, and we don't necessarily have control. When we can let those feelings go, when we can accept life and people as they are, 
joy starts to creep into our lives. I think I shared how we went to the beach during a storm while we were on Unst. And the lesson I learned while I was there was that nature does not care about your feelings. It just goes about its business. I had zero effect against the wind, and there was no way I could have stopped those waves pounding against the cliffs. Well, we have zero effect against the actions others choose to take, and we cannot bend the world to our desires. But while I stood there in that storm, I could appreciate the beauty of what was going on around me. I could feel gratitude for the sea and revel in that magnificent wind. Life is often unpredictable and wild, and all we can do is appreciate the fact that for all its chaos, we still have the sounds of laughter the taste of chocolate, and burnished shades of sunsets. Let's have another song. This one is from another artist that may sound familiar. Back in episode 14, I played You and Me by Annika Stemper. This is another of her songs. It is a beautiful, soothing piece about the power of love and wanderlust and where they intersect. This is Wilderness by Annika Stemper. A few more things before I go. I have some details for you. A few more things before I go. I have some details for you. Yay! About some places I'll be in the coming month. At Vogue Knitting Live, I'll be at the Morehouse Farm booth on this Saturday. That's January 18th from 1 to 2. They will be selling paper copies of some of the Harriet's collection patterns and we'll have some kits available. Come by and say hi. I really love getting to meet listeners. Everyone has just been lovely. I'm so lucky to have such great people listening to the show. I will also be at the Morehouse Farm booth at Stitches United on March 28th. The booth is larger at that event, so Erin and I thought it would be fun to do a few games of trivia. Right now, it looks like I will be hosting three games at 10, 1, and 3. For a $5 donation to the MRI Scanner Appeal, you will get an entry card, and each game will have 15 questions. The winners will be notified by email after the event is over when we've had time to check the entries. Erin is offering a Morehouse Farm gift certificate as a prize for each round, and the questions will be different each round, so you can come by and play each time if you like. 
In addition, the first 50 people who donate the $5 for each round of the game to get their entry card will also get a stitch marker uh, from me. I wanted to make sure that everyone was aware that Loch Ness Knitfest has announced their dates for next year, and they've moved it later in the month, so it's looking like I'm not going to be able to go this year. But for those who have been looking forward to it, it will be October 23rd to the 25th, which is a Friday to a Sunday, in Inverness, Scotland. They have changed the venue, so it will now be at the University of the Highlands and Islands, which I think is going to be an improvement for the event. It is still up in the air about whether I'll be able to go or not, but what this does mean is either way, I should be able to attend Rhinebeck this year, so I'm pretty excited about that. I went for the first time maybe three or four years ago now with my friend Jenny, and I've been looking forward to making the trip back. I know Loch Ness and Rhinebeck aren't for a long time yet, but I have been planning out my year, so it's all on my mind. Anyway, thank you for listening and knitting with me for a bit. If you'd like to support the show, please visit patreon.com slash I thought I knew how to make a monthly pledge or consider making a purchase from one of our sponsors on the website. I thought I knew how dot family podcasts.com where you can also find the show notes for each episode. You could also help by leaving a five star review and kind comments wherever you listen to the podcast and be sure to tell your friends. Find me on my social media accounts as I Thought I Knew How, except on Twitter where it's just Thought I Knew How. The groups on Ravelry and Facebook are both called I Thought I Knew How Podcast. Remember that the discussion for the January Knit Along, Mackin for the MRI, will be going on on the Pearl Together Ravelry board, so be sure to hop over there and join. Until next time, may you be blessed with stitches that never drop, yarn without joints, and